Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Shadow and Sun Show. And welcome back to another Prepper video for gamers. Uh, you know, if, if you stumble across this video and you're not a gamer, come on in, grab a seat. You, you know, uh, th th this, this is a little bit, not, not as often as I'd like, uh, geared toward gamers, people who role play and, and want to get that, you know, uh, you, use those skills. But you know what? We all should have a little bit of prepping in us, if not, you know, and I'm not necessarily make it your hobby or your lifestyle, but it, it really is just common sense. And today we are going to talk about what you most of you have been waiting for. I want to I'm going to save the pew pews for next week, um, just because uh, uh, you know uh, Grim's not here, and I, I really don't want to focus on it much, but it, it should be covered. Because there's some basic things you can do, but we'll we'll get to that you know next week. Really, I want to talk about the most important thing, which is being safe. The number one issue for all intelligent people out there, in, in human beings, or you know even other creatures, is safety and security, and that should include your family, and at, at some point maybe even some of your neighbors, your friends. You know if if you know. You know your friends aren't doing certain things. They're going to want to come to you when you know stuff happens, and you know you may not be ready for that. So it it behooves you to you know get your friends out there to to do a couple of basic things to to not be a burden to yourself or their neighbors, and to to not be lined up at your door when when it happens because that's the last thing you want because that will attract the attention of everybody around they see a lion at your door when when everything is rough there no one's ever going to believe you're out of supplies when people have been coming to your door you know pretty regularly or or there's a line of people or people camped out on your doorstep with nowhere else to go so um let's get into it uh i know uh bo here uh my my my, my good friend and uh Gay Master on Friday nights uh, has been going over this with me uh, since the beginning, not just Grim, who, uh, Grim, if you're watching this, uh, hope you are feeling better. Um, it, it's not the same without you, but I get it. You know, if, if you're coughing and stuff, you you, you, you don't want to be coughing and, and constantly muting the mic and, and trying to struggle. But, you know, there's always a spot for you here, buddy. Um, hopefully next week you'll be ready, and hopefully Bo will join us again uh, if he has the time. I know Wednesdays are rough for him, and I appreciate you being here tonight. I also appreciate the Crafting Gamer hanging out with us and Six Nation. How's it going, guys? So, so Bo, you wanted to you wanted to get some get some get some thoughts and ideas out there. What would you like to start with? Well, I'd, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to be on your show. Uh, uh, my handle is uh, Bo Paints Minis. The, the YouTube channel is Bo Paints Minis. I'm the only man on YouTube with a face for radio and a voice for print. And uh, what I think about, I always begin uh, any discussion on any any topic with with the question, and it's sort of like you know, we need to define the terms. And uh, you know where you stand depends on where you sit. And we talk about security, uh, home security, personal security. Um, every everybody's question is different and everybody's perspective is different. And what I like about your show is that we focus on it from, from a gaming perspective. I know that gamers tend not to be rich, right? We spend our money on paints, minis, games, and hobbies. So what can we do? Um, I, I tell my wife that I'm allowed to have one expensive hobby. And if my one expensive hobby is gaming, and I'm not saying it is, you, anybody, is, any man is entitled to one expensive hobby. But for a lot of people prepping and preparedness and survivalism can become a very expensive hobby. So what I want people watching the show to do, I want you to sit down and write down your questions. You know, where are your concerns for home security? Do you work nights and leave your wife and kids home alone while you're at work? Do you have uh, an expensive collection of high density valuables? art, electronics, paperwork that you need to keep secured while you're on vacation? 
Um, what is it that you have that you really need to be that you really need to secure? And write those questions down, and then start thinking about specific answers. My one rule for preparedness is that specific answers require specific solutions, and it's oftentimes less expensive to address specific concerns than it is to try to take the shotgun approach and just blast everything at once. So let's look at home security from a pragmatic and realistic and inexpensive um, perspective. Yeah, you know, look at things that we can do and I hope we could talk about some of those things over the course of the show, things you can do to make your house a little bit more secure, things you can do to make your, your bedrooms more secure, uh, things that you can do to, um, uh, encourage either home invaders or, or burglars to pick somebody else's house and not yours. Just, just, just to give you some of my perspective and, you know, things that I'd like to chime in on while we're here. We can save, uh, your, your vehicle and, or going out for a, a later episode, if you like, your vehicle is your vehicle's pretty much the same as your house, right? I mean, what can you do to keep your vehicle secure? Well, not leave valuables in your car. Um, keep your car locked at all times, whether you're inside or out. Um, and then if we're talking about specific things like being careful on the road or, or avoiding um, areas or avoiding transitional spaces, you know, if you're talking about personal security, most assaults of the human person occur when you're moving from one place to the other, like moving from a, from a car through a parking lot, whether that be mm -hmm. a grocery store or a convenience store or a freeway rest stop, um, that, that's where you're going to find your, yourself in, in danger from violent criminal assailants, um, aggressive panhandlers and, and strong arm robbers. But yeah, I think that's a, that's a whole show unto itself. And if you want, I can recommend places where we can get some training on that. There's a lot of free training available on YouTube. I really recommend you look at guys like uh, like Craig Douglas at uh, ShivWorks. And he's got whole units on um, managing unknown contacts. Um, the other guys in the ShivWorks Collective, you can still find a lot of uh, William April stuff online. We lost him to uh, cancer about a year ago. But um, – all the guys, all the all the guys, it's a Shiv Works. All the guys in the Shiv Works Collective will offer um, stuff on managing unknown contacts. If you just type in Muck M U C into your Google, uh, pardon me, uh, YouTube search bar, you're gonna get gobs and gobs of stuff. Now, okay, update. There you go. One of the physical security six stations. Let's talk about that for a minute. Um, hardware, home hardware. This is something that I did when I first moved into my house. Most homes are not constructed for physical security. Most even exterior doors are entirely too light and too small. But here are two things that you can do. You can go to either a some place that does like architectural um, re reclamation or some place that sells door blanks. And I, what, what I want you to do is I want you to measure your exterior door, the actual dimensions. And you're going to buy a door that fits that size. Um, most hinges only have three holes, and unfortunately, the the middle hole is the one that's in the wrong in the right position. The other two are in the off position. On the door jam side, on the door jam side, the inside holes are going to go into the door frame. But the ones that are closest to the outside only go into a, a furring strip that's only about a half an inch thick, maybe. So here's what you're going to do. On the door, on the holes that go on the door jam side, <clears throat> you're going to drill out. You're going to drill out, very carefully drill that hole out about three inches deep so that the hole goes into the second stud on the door jam. You're going to replace those screws with hardened three inch deck screws, preferably ceramic coated hardened three inch deck screws. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna make your door, your door no longer the weakest link. It's gonna securely connect that door and that door hinge to that frame. 
Now, if you look at this door behind me, this is a cheap, this is a, like a closet door. What I want you to do is I want you to also, your master bedroom, that your master bedroom is going to be your safe room. That's going to be the place where you fall back to in case of an emergency. You can get all the kids into it, everybody in the house into it. Replace that door with a solid core door and put a deadbolt lock on it. Now, remember, we talked about home security like an onion. You've added one more layer for about 150 bucks, maybe, if you paid retail for the door. Solid core door for your master bedroom. Decent lock. They don't need to be super high security Schlage three-dimensional key locks. As long as you've got a deadbolt with a long throw, you can also invest in one of the uh, deadbolt shackles that you find at Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace Hardware that replaces mm -hmm. the, the inside where the deadbolt throws with a, with a solid steel shackle. And they can, you can, those screws, again, three inch hardened deck screws. Now you've got a deadbolt and you're in that door is that door is going to be about kick proof. Anybody who wants to get into that door is going to take a sledgehammer to it. What, what do you think about those, uh, those, like those floor doorstop things? The, the ones that, uh, kind of like a, a deadbolt, but into the floor. So that Absolutely, but those don't work when you're not home. Those only work from the inside. Right. How are you going to set that up when you go on vacation? You know, you want to take a weekend trip to Vegas. You want to go go to grandma's house or a cabin in the woods for the weekend. You can't. Usually, those things have to be set from the inside. So while you're right. asleep, great. But I'm trying to make. I'm trying to put as much passive security in as I can, and I'm trying to recommend things to people that are easy to do that you can do with nothing but a drill. And uh, the appropriate size drill, but just remember to wax those screws before you put them in so they don't split the wood. And why I recommend pre-drilling pre, pre pilot holes and so you're less likely to uh, split those two-by-fours. So it's pre drill them to the appropriate size. You want the hole to be just undersized. If you have any questions, usually the people at the hardware store are pretty informative. Just don't tell them exactly what it's for. Say, hey, look, I'm, putting, I'm, I'm using these deck screws. What size drill bit do I need for these deck screws? You can use a bar of soap or a candle to uh, wax the screws before you put them in so there's, so that the screws it lubricates the screw so it doesn't split the 2x4. Uh, uh, um, because if you split that stud, you're going to have to take out all that sheetrock to replace it. And then you got to – and then you got to – if you give a mouse a cookie, Shadow, if you give a mouse a cookie, he wants a glass of milk. If you split that stud – you got to rip that sheet rock out. And if you rip that yep. sheet rock out, you got a mud and tape. And if you got a mud and tape, you got to match paint. And if you got to match paint, your wife is going to say, well, we may as well repaint the whole room. So, oh, no. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I painted my entire house uh, in, in Perrier a couple of years ago. And we've got some incredibly high vaulted ceilings. I was, at one point, I was literally like 18 feet off the floor on this this like Lowe's scaffold on my back freaking doing the ceiling like freaking uh the Sistine Chapel. I'm not doing that ever again. Yeah. Never. So th again things easy things you can do. I tell you what what you can do even if you live in well maybe not all HOAs, but a lot of places you can do even if you put a three foot tall, just a three foot tall chain link fence around your front yard. All of a sudden, people don't typically just jump over fences unless they've got a reason to. What you're trying to do is you're trying to buy yourself time. Anything you can do to buy yourself time and make it just inconvenient to break into your house and pick the neighbor's house instead. Uh, eat cheap, uh, cheap CCTV cameras, just the ones that, um, even if they're not on the cloud, just the ones that are accessible from your house. Put up two or three of those, and now all of a sudden somebody breaks in your house. Well, now you've got them on film, or right. you know. And if you can't, or even if you can, there are a lot of uh, fake cameras out there that will, you know, on a budget, they will, you know, someone sees those, they're like not taking the chance. They won't even come up to the door because a lot of times these people, uh, you know, uh, burglars at least, will case your your home from their vehicle so that they can, you know, do what they're doing 
and not put themselves in obvious, you know, scope of intention. You know, they're obviously case in your place. They may park in front of your house and, and pull out a freaking, you know, a map or their phone and act like they're lost, but they're, you know, taking sideways glances at your house. And if they, you know, they see the cameras or the fake domes or any of that stuff, they're going to be just like, mm, uh, okay, this ain't the place. The, the, you know, there's three other places in this neighborhood without anything like that. So might as well go there. Hey, I, Fritz, I, how I, you doing? Long time no see, man. Uh, I, you know, I keep hoping to see your show, but uh, you, you know, uh, I know you've been busy with, with other stuff, but uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, shoot me a discord message so that I don't miss the next show or maybe even your schedule. If you've got a week that you're always going to do a show at a certain time, I want to hang out there, man. It, 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 it helps me get more done, you know, when it comes to stuff on my table. Uh, if I've got, you know, a, uh, uh, a partner in crime to 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 paint along with my friend Armstrong has just been I, I I don't know where he's been so I can't listen to him talk about Gasland so um and he, his videos are always videos so I can like watch them whenever but during the afternoon when I got all this free time and there's no Fritz what what what, what what's up with that so I I like to um do uh, some other things for my perimeter and, 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 and actually have things ready. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of cheap ways you can make uh, alarm systems, you know, the old tried and true cans and, and, and fishing line and things like that. But I, I go one step further with having uh, additional fencing I can put up, you know, rather quickly, kind of like uh barricades with uh stuff on them you know uh that you're not supposed to do but you can you know if it, you know if, if there's no you know uh actual police working anymore right. um my area is 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 got the smallest amount of police i have ever heard of in a place so large it, it, it's it's virtually non-existent and the last thing they're going to be doing is worrying about the kind of fence or, or things on my fence or what have you. But, right. you know, if it gets bad, there's, there's some things you can do and putting up the old, you know, tin cans or barbed wire or things like that. You know, even though you live in a residential area, you know what? Go somewhere else. Let's, let's take a minute and address, address that. Your, 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 the first, the first uh, criteria you mentioned, in any t type of prep situation. Again, I always try to define the terms and define the situation. So I, I, I prepare primarily. There are three criteria, three different, three different situations, and where you, um, I tend to devote the most of my limited resources to the ones that are the most likely to happen. We talk about a, a threat matrix. You put the most resources where the things that are most likely to go wrong. I'm most likely to have a flat tire, so I make sure I've got a spare tire. I'm less likely to um, be in a nuclear blast, so maybe I don't have a dosimeter and uh, and a Geiger counter that are charged, calibrated, and ready to go. But mm -hmm. So let's talk about three situations. One, grid up. Grid up uh, the normal police, normal uh, interaction with your neighbors, Maybe you might have lost your job. You might have. You might be dealing with some short-term catastrophe. But if I dial 911, I can assume that it works, right? That's a grid-up scenario. Yeah. Second, second is a temporary grid down. Temporary situation where EMS might be overwhelmed, flood, wildfire, uh, serious earthquake, something like uh, like New Orleans and the Gulf Coast during Hurricane Katrina. Uh, maybe the immediate aftermath of a tornado, yeah, short-term grid down. And then long-term grid down. We call that a without rule of law situation. That's, that's you know, Mad Max. There's, there's nothing left. Society is completely broken, and you've got to rebuild. I tend not to devote too much time and resources to those, to those situations because, because frankly, yeah. it's, it's, it hasn't happened in my lifetime. Yeah, there, that's that's where the gamers in us really kind of 
go a little nuts. You know, we've I'm played sure. Gamma World and Aftermath. It's and, and, you know, it, 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 exactly. And, and that's why there have been so many games built around that. If you want to, you know, practice, I would practice on the gaming table for that. And, you know, it, it, it's a nice mental exercise, you know, uh, akin to actual military role play um, where they, you know, come up with a situation, and then, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, there are uh, uh, that that's being a thing that or is a more common thing I see with with a lot of the prepper channels I watch and people I know that, you know, they're they're wargaming this stuff out, you know, not not as like a class, but just when they're you know, out and about doing something, you know, uh, uh, an older officer will will put his, you know, underlings through this sort of a mental situation. They're on a, you know, they're on a drive somewhere or something, and, and the older guy will, will you know, put forth a scenario, what would you do, and, and gets everybody involved and just keeps them mentally alert. Do it on the gaming table. If you want to, you know, do the Mad Max, the, the Road Warrior thing, you know, cool, but, you know, here in the states, that that it literally has not happened in over a hundred years. Anything even remotely akin to that. Well, now, since the, really, it, since the American Civil War, even the Great right. Depression, even the Great Depression wasn't completely without rule of law. In fact, they probably had more rule of law than than, right, than we than do ever. Before. So yeah. let's let's right. talk about you know again your practical applications, practical things for home security. Um, and, and on a budget, uh, recognizing that some people live in neighborhoods that are not by their choice, right? If you sure. if you have if you have the means and you're in a bad neighborhood, move. If you're not, if you don't have the means, then you have to make the best of the worst, make the best of your bad situation. So what can you do? Things like um, having good window coverings, right, on the inside, good curtains. So people can't see in um, things like clearing back bushes and and uh, shrubbery and trees that are close to your house, so that people can't hide behind them when they are breaking a window or trying to jimmy a window or a back door open, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> things like making sure that your property has good drainage, so you're not so you don't get flooded when the rains come. Not necessarily home security, but while you're trimming out the bushes, you may as well dig out some good drainage. Uh, a dog. A dog's interesting to me. People always want to have a dog. I can beat almost any dog on the planet with a hamburger. Right? Everybody at once well, have a dog. Sure, dogs are yapping, but if, man, I throw that dog a quarter pounder. Dog is now my best friend. So unless well, you've got a trained shits hound, I, I don't really lend a lot of credence to dogs. Um, and not only that, but um, what you mentioned that 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 that's that's a dog for like one minute is distracted or maybe he's less inclined to attack you um where i was educated i'm just going to put it that way um it was more likely for you to uh spike that dog food with something that would knock it out for the night sure and I, or, or, I, worse, or worse put the dog in amazing pain i i love dogs but if i was if i was a bad guy what if I put a handful of broken light bulb glass in, in, in a, in, inside a hamburger and gave it to the dog? Dog's not going to think about fighting me anymore. So right, right. I, um, that that's that's just um, that that's that's messed up. But um, I, I messed up. But I, I'm saying I wouldn't rely. No, no, on there the is dog. a flaw to that. That being the dog is now making a different kind of noise. And any kind of owner who doesn't uh, jump up and go, "What the f sure. is going wrong with my dog?" Sure. Th th that it was easier to to slip it uh, a couple of sleeping pills, and now the dog is just completely, you know, immobile, and and nobody thinks anything. None the wiser. The dog isn't barking. The dog isn't whining. Right. The dog is out. Um, so. If a, if a dog is one of your layers, and if you're already a dog person, I mean, like I know, I know, Shadow, you got a dog, but you got a dog because it's a member of the family, not because you rely upon it for home home security. No, fortunately, my next door neighbor has two pit bulls that are not pets. 
They no. are security. And the, 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 they're, they're guarding my house as well as his. He doesn't realize that I feel sorry for the animals because I take my dog out to get the mail every day without a leash. And they don't bark at him. They whine at him. They literally cry out in misery because of the lifestyle they live. They see yeah. him and just like literally cry. And it's heartbreaking. So I don't take him out every single time, but they just sit there. But if anything even remotely uh, unusual happens, they are barking their 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 lungs out. And right. I can hear that all the way upstairs you know, uh, ac uh, across the way from his place. So, no, that's I, a good I, one. It, it, it's, it, if it's, like I said, if it's another layer to your, exactly. to, your to, to your layout, then it makes sense. But I don't, I try not to rely upon any one thing. There are, there are ways, there are things that you can do there. A lot of things though, Shadow, we are, tend to have a, um, lend too much credence two without actually doing the research ourselves i tell you yeah. one that really 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 makes me angry are is the whole um the the united at least in america is the safe industry you know they're not safes they're no. you, you can't you can't even find a safe on the market that's actually a safe we talked about no. this the other day i know that you kevin and i talked about this they're they're yeah. they're marketed as safes but if you read the fine print they are residential security containers. Most of them are rated about five minutes with hand tools, not even power tools. Yep. A, yep. a a two pound hammer and a cold chisel will get you into most residential security containers inside five minutes. And these things cost no, thousands less, of dollars. Less thousands than that. Of thousands of dollars. For the most part, I, I can get dollars. into. I can get into most of them with a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, most of the backs of these devices are sheet metal screwed in to a frame, and all you need is a is a screwdriver and and the time. Uh, the worst thing you're gonna have to worry about is you know putting the pieces that you've disassembled somewhere that doesn't make a lot of noise. Otherwise, you know if you've got 20 minutes, 15 minutes, you can take the back panel off, take the side panels off, whichever you choose and scoop up whatever's inside quick as you please. Um, here, here's a thing that um, I've been doing for a very long time ever. Well, it, 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 that's irrelevant, is do not advertise. You would be amazed at what people do without realizing they're doing it. When we go grocery shopping, we bring the car in. When, we're, when we get home, we bring the car in and unload with the door closed it's hard to do but during the food shortages and we would go grocery shopping our, our car would be full but nobody knew where we went and nobody knew what we did because we would pull that in and we would literally have to pull the the grocery bags from over the 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 back seat so to speak into the you know where you get out of the car so that people weren't watching us come in with you know, large amounts of food. Don't okay. have your food delivered. That's that's just. Uh, I mean, unless you absolutely have to, right. have it done. Have it done at night, right? Because nobody cares. Nobody's yep. looking out their window at night um, when when a, when a UPS or FedEx or or Walmart right. or Amazon vehicle comes to you because they're busy watching TV. Ninety nine percent of the population is either watching TV or maybe they're asleep. Um, now that you mentioned so let's break this down again we break this down into uh operational security to use a jargon and and physical security right there are things you can do to um protect yourself intelligence wise don't put bumper stickers on your car that say where your kids go to school don't put stickers on your car that say how many kids you have oh, don't put yeah. stickers on your car that advertise your political beliefs don't put bumper stickers on your car that advertise what kind of guns you like. That is the stupidest thing ever. Or, Look, or that you are in law enforcement, military, or no, uh, don't. Affiliation. Here's what you can. Here's one thing you can do that costs about a hundred dollars a year, and I recommend it to everybody. I don't care where you live. 
get a post office box. Don't get your mail or your Amazon stuff shipped to your house. Go to some place like a mailboxes, etc., where you can get your mail and your UP UPS and your FedEx and all your Amazon stuff delivered to keep the porch pirates off your yard. Now, it's unfortunate that we live in a time where I have to say that, but I do. People are you, YouTube is absolutely full of videos full of porch pirates that will steal from you. And if they'll steal from you now, how will things be when this when security gets lax again? If there's another COVID, if there's something worse than COVID, spend the money, get all of your packages delivered. When you put in for uh, information, say you're I don't know you, you want to get a shopper's reward card from the grocery store, don't give them your home address. Give me your post office box address or your your uh, the mail, your mailbox, et cetera, address. Nobody needs to know where you live if, if they don't work for the government. It's it's not expensive for most people. I said yeah. it's about $100 a year to get it to get I, a mail. I, I have an alternate, you know, uh, situation with my mailing. I do need to get a post office box because my friend who's receiving mail for me is – not happy with the situation, but you know, uh, we do each other favors and that's one of the favors that he's doing for me. Um, another one is, you know, you mentioned the, the, the post office. Well, there's other things you might have delivered, you know, new appliances and things like that. Again, schedule them for the evening. Do not have them, you know, especially like big screen TVs or things like that. And if you, for example, like I've got a neighbor who does this and I'm like, dude, you are just advertising that you have money to blow. If you need your car detailed, go to them. Do not have a guy out to detail your car. Because not only is he um, knowing that you're paying an exorbitant amount of money to make your, your car look pretty, but you're also welcoming, welcoming this guy. And no offense, but a lot of those guys tend to have connections if you know what i mean sure um, they're working you know they're working on the side who knows what else they're doing it's a perfect cover to do other things while you're out detailing a guy's car while he's at work and he's like yeah just come on over and detail my car well you know he may not be burglarizing your house but he might be burglarizing someone else's house go to their place say hey i want you to detail my car i'm gonna just you know kick back i'll bring a lawn chair and read a book while you do it you're not coming to my place i'll come to your place Letting people know that you have expensive habit, habits, hobbies, and tastes is also an, an invitation. Maybe not now, but later on down the road, let's assume you got a Twilight Zone situation where everybody's, you know, going crazy and they're thinking, well, we can't go anywhere. Who's got the best stuff? Who's got that bunker? You know, that episode where everybody's yeah. going crazy trying to get into the guy's bunker. Well, they're going to be trying to get in your front door to get to your refrigerator when, you know, they run out of food. But they're they're assuming you're you're stocked to the gills, you know. You're rich. You probably have, you know, tons and tons of food. And not only that, but it's probably better food than we have. So, you know, give us your food and, and we'll go away kind of situation. Um, right. don't advertise any of those things. You know, um we, we talked last week about getting to know your neighbors. It, it, this is in oh, case you haven't it. done that. If you've gotten to know your neighbors and you know them to a certain extent, and they're willing to, to put in the work to, to put up the neighborhood watch and stuff, then then those people, you, you, you could probably put them in a different category than the complete strangers. The complete strangers are the ones who will not hesitate to hop your fence, bust in a window, get at what you've got because they've got nothing. Because it only takes, what, three meals before a society collapses? You know, three meals with uh, three day, three going without three meals or three days, you are really, right well, I mean, before like, they start going for kids. How how many how many meals does a kid have to skip before a dad will uh, you know shed blood to feed his kids? Right. So, um, well, you know, like like, my, uh, like, like they said in Firefly, well, it depends on how much you like your kids. Um, you like but your kids. Absolutely, you know, uh, but no, uh, and, and fortunately, I live in an area where there are literally uh, there's literally only one house within twenty houses that have any small children at their house. They're all retirees or, you know, middle-aged, you know, 30-ish uh, year olds that are renting or 
you know, people who've been there forever and probably aren't prepared for anything. I, I know like five or six of my neighbors, they live alone, they're elderly, and they are they they couldn't, you know, they 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 couldn't do anything to defend themselves. And that's actually a good thing from my perspective because I know they're the last people that are going to be, you know, doing anything dangerous. But on the opposite side of that equation is the fact that I'm going to feel sorry for them and I'm going to want to help them in a worst case situation. And, you know, that, 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 that's, you know, different for everybody, but that's why we, we should get to know our neighbors and have these talks with them so that they will, you know, think about it. Hey, you know, if an emergency hits, you know, what am I going to do? You know, if they're over 80, sorry, um, they're kind of on their own, you know. I, I there's there's almost nothing you can do in a triage situation like that to to help them uh, if they haven't thought to help themselves. You know, they've had a good life. Good luck. You know, I'll pray for you, but sorry, you know, I, I've got too many other people to consider. And you know, if you're on eight different kinds of medicine, and you mm -hmm. know that's a bigger issue than your next meal. No, but. You know, if you if you like to if you like to, to vacation, if you like to take road trips, if you like to leave town, it's good to talk to your neighbors and say, hey, you know, hey, are you, if you're going out of town, you know, maybe I'll, I can get your mail if you still have mail delivered. If you if you disregarded the first one, or mm -hmm. unfortunately, people don't get newspapers delivered at home anymore. That's the worst. Nothing worse than saying rob me than five or six newspapers piled up on the uh, on the welcome mat because nobody brought them in for a couple of days. Yeah, yep. yep. Uh, that that I remember when that stopped, um, and, and I was watching it. You know, uh, prior to that, you know, when Jackie and I would ride to school, I would be like, "Look, Jack, they're on vacation." He's like, "Huh?" I'm like, "You know, you see what I see?" Yeah. He's like, "Oh, the newspapers." Yeah. yeah. You know, and then they stopped doing that and. Uh, we don't ride to school together anymore because he's he's all grown up and needs right. his me time. You know, right. it's a ten minute ride, and you know, no, uh, th things like that. Have, knowing your neighbors enough to to watch to watch out for each other. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna be. You know, I'm gonna be out of town for the weekend. Can you make sure my cat gets fed? Can you make sure the dog gets fed? Can you bring the mail in? You know, mail for me. Um, you know, we've got a couple of uh, neighbor kids. That uh, that we contract with when we go out of town to make sure those things get done. Another thing, mm -hmm. again, okay. So we talked about now on the, in the subject of money. If you can afford it, if you can afford the fifty or sixty bucks a month, I'm actually a big fan of monitored home security. Monitored home security works. Something like Vivint or ADT, where you can get, you know, if somebody breaks into your house, it's a loud alarm, and if the alarm doesn't turn off, the police show up. It work. The reason it works, even mm -hmm. if you can't, you can always just you know find a knockoff sign, but uh, or, still, or, good, or, still, or you can always steal your neighbor's sign. But um, the difference is, if somebody wants to call your bluff, oh, they they break out the window and there's no there's no uh, window sensor, or they do break your window and there is a window sensor. It's another it's another layer that you can add for a reasonable expense for most people in the u.s i mean i realize that for some people it might be uh exorbitant but if you're if you're already if you've already built up through those layers shadow you've already replaced yeah. all your doors with solid core doors if you've already put up the tallest fence that your zoning law will allow even if it's only three feet tall if you've already cut back all your hedges and bushes if you've already you know, i don't know gotten a dog you're to that point what's next you can upgrade. You can upgrade your locks. You start moving into um, uh, higher security, or you know, there's uh, the uh, there are videos on YouTube where you can add an extra pin or add custom pin settings to yep. your to your locks, and that's not expensive either. If you have, um, or you, you can have always have your um, hire a locksmith to rekey all of your locks to something that's a little bit. Um, you can add pick-proof wafers, even to cheap locks, even like uh, uh, quick sets. You can you can add uh, pick-proof pins. Uh, you know, uh, I, I've actually replaced a lot of the, the the doorknobs and locks and systems here, 
and it's really not that hard. I would actually, if you're actually going to go that route, um, I would recommend start by doing the interior locks yourself. Learn how to do it. So, you know, just change, you know, just regularly, you know, not regularly, but, you know, take the time and change some locks and some doorknobs in your house. And once you've learned how, how to do that, you know, because it, it's not hard, but it's not super, super simple. You need to know a few things, you know, how to need to, you know, operate a screwdriver, things like that, but learn how to do that. And then, you know, cause I, I wouldn't hire someone to come in and do that because that's also a telltale sign. You need to, you need to get a real hawksmith, someone who's, you, know, you can't hire Joe bag of donuts from down the street to do it for you. I would hire, I would only hire somebody with the brick and mortar a front and I would definitely right. want to go to their store to interview them. Cause there's always, it's always any business transaction is an interview. I interview yeah. you, you interview me. Um, yep. Maybe, maybe that guy's not a good fit. And then you, you, if you need bona fides, definitely check, make sure that they're licensed, bonded and insured before you have them to your house. One thing I wanted to add uh, a, a minute ago, um, I highly am totally 100% against things like Alexa and any other cameras that are, or listening devices that are in your home. It's already bad enough. Your, your, your cell phone and your tablets and your computers are all doing it. But, right. That, that goes to a different kind of uh, processing center than the other ones do. And I've actually um, heard of situations where the security company themselves were somehow involved with the break-ins because the people there would basically be, you know, getting addresses and handing those addresses off to the people who did the work, that being breaking into people's houses that were not home. And I would definitely avoid any of that. It's bad enough you, you've got your phone right there listening to you, but that information goes to someplace that it, where it just gets filed. There's nobody actively listening to it. They're, you, they're saving it up for later when they want to try to get you on something else, then they go through all of that. If yeah. you go into, you know, um, some sort of, you know, private security, fine, outside, no problem. You want to, you, you know, hook up cameras to the outside. You can watch it on your phone. Cool. But, you know, if you've got cameras in the house that are watching you do things, not a good idea whatsoever. Uh, you and and again, with the, again, with the locksmith, if he's coming to your house, tell him don't arrive in your truck or the deal is off because that's also a cue to the people who may think later, Hey, this guy put new locks on his house and had a, had a big to do about having someone come over to his house to do the locks. Well, what's he hiding? Because I, what people you all have to understand is that no matter what security you put up, there's always one piece of security nobody ever steps to and that's your windows okay your windows are nothing to get through you probably have in your front yard all of the tools a burglar needs to get in through your windows in a situation yeah. and if if the neighborhood is crap and the police reaction time is awful and, and your neighbors don't care then people could literally just throw a rock through your window walk in and do whatever they want. Your no. doors are meaningless if you don't have something on your window. And there are things you can do to your windows between the tape, uh, the, the tinting tape, and things like that, where they're going to have to smash out the whole freaking window to get in. It's not just going to all one rock and then shatter away for them. Um, there are other things you can do by getting windows that have multiple pieces of uh, 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 glass with you know the metal that holds them into place, like kind of like stained glass, but multiple panes and multiple levels. If they've got to go through, you know, two or three layers of glass to get through, you know, like storm windows and things like that to right. get through your windows, that's, that's much better. Sure. Um, because it, it really, especially a, a back door window, which is the first or second easiest place for burglars to get in. It, it's a toss up between your garage door and your back doors because yeah sure someone heard broke breaking glass but did they see it 
Do they know exactly where it came from? Do you right. have walls all around your house to where you they can't see somebody in your backyard so they don't know that, you know, you didn't just, you know, break some piece of glass on accident instead of it being someone breaking in through your back door, you know, with a, with a hammer. And even then, if the burglars know what they're doing, they're going to tape up the glass before they break it and use a distracting noise to muffle the breaking of the glass that allows them to put their hand in and unlock your door and boom, they're in, in, you know, a minute and a half and nobody's the wiser. I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about like the Italian job or, 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 uh, you know, uh, or uh, oceans 11, those guys breaking into my house, those guys right. have got, you know, bigger houses to break into. If you're, if you are Clearly. worried about, Ocean's Eleven crowd or the Italian job crowd, then you can afford to. You're not watching your security videos on YouTube. You're hiring someone to go through and do it for you. And then you're talking about cameras from multiple angles. You're talking about um, sound sensors that detect broken glass. You're talking about spending a lot of money on things like that. And, and um, right, I think that the the number one thing burglars look for, frankly, is unlocked doors. Um. Doors that are easy to get into, like I said, they're, where they're hidden from view. Doors that are, that are not visible from the street or they're yep. in a big tree or a big hedge that's between the street and the door that they can hide behind. Um, things that, that we can easily do now for almost no money. Things that you can do for you know maybe uh, $150 or $200 a year to drastically improve your situation. Uh, going through and making sure that all of your all of the screws and all your doorknobs and everything are well secured, and that there there are no loose hinges, and that your windows actually lock um, when when you're when you're not around. Making sure your windows just can't slide open, or you don't have one of those uh, Arcadia or patio doors that I can just lift off the track from the outside. <laughs> When, so what I would recommend everyone watching this video, again, I want you to get a notepad and uh, a pencil and walk around your, I don't care if it's an apartment or a condo or a house, or if you're living in a cardboard box under a viaduct, go through and look for, <laughs> look, for look for the low hanging fruit. Start fixing things now. Start looking for things like, oh yeah, this window, it doesn't lock all the way because there's a bunch of dirt in the track. Well, get your shot back out. And a, and, a, and a toothbrush and clean out all that dirt so that that door, that window is locked shut. Oh, this uh, this door is is uh, this is basically an interior door, but it's on the outside of my house. You'd be surprised how many of those I've seen. Or somebody has uh, basically a cardboard and plywood uh, you know, doors for an exterior or door. Board. So you know, go through and fix those things. And if you need to find, and again, a, lo a lot of doors uh, now. Um, it's hard to find a door slab because they typically, most like the Lowe's and home, your home improvement center, they sell a door that's already attached to the frame. Yep. But if you go through, you know what is funny? When we moved in here, when we moved in here, uh, we wanted to put a, a nail in the door for a wreath for Christmas, and it turns out the door is freaking metal. The front door is metal. Yeah. But I don't know where they got it, but. Like, hey, thank you. You just saved me a crap ton of money on my home defense project. Yeah, most of those most of those steel doors are usually just two layers of sheet metal, and they're actually filled with uh, styrofoam, literally. So uh, just go through again, go through your house and 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 look what you can fix today, and then make a list. You know, I I want everyone to make their little matrix. Things you can fix today, things you can fix next week, things you can fix next year. And, um, and, and we know, that, again, Shadow, you're kind of an expert on uh, – there's a, also a timeline for money. The longer you're willing to wait, the less expensive things are. If you're willing yep. to wait for a deal, if you're willing to wait uh, to go to, like, a, like I said, a, a architectural, architectural salvage places are really mm -hmm. popular now with do-it-yourselfers. They'll tear down a house. And uh, salvage everything that's salvageable. Every every city's got one now. Go you there. Know, uh, just, you, you, you you reminded me of something. Um, 
it's it's kind of not necessarily off topic, but it could be um, your your coins. Um, I always pay cash for everything, so I'm always every time I go shopping, I'm bringing home you know about a buck in change, and I put all that change away, pennies in one, silver in the other. Okay, and over the course of a year, I tend to put away about two hundred dollars in coins every single year. Right. I do not spend those. Do not put them in the cash machines you know, for an emergency, you know, roll them up if you have to, or better yet, hang on to them. Because when, when paper starts, you know, if something really bad happens, uh, you'll be able to use those coins faster than you will be able to use anything else. Um, now, the next time I, the next time I'm on your show, as you know, the next time I get to pick the topic, I do have a bunch of notes. I want to help people get, um, especially people on a budget and you know prepping for gamers, how to start with zero money and uh, you know build up what I call your your, your from your, from level zero to level ten. Let's get you up there. Um, and and you, you made some interesting points regarding saving coins. Um, a lot of times, if if you belong to a credit union, they'll typically have a coin machine that doesn't charge. It doesn't take okay. its ten percent or fifteen percent out. The credit union I belong to has got one of those coin machines, and uh, I've got we call that our adventure jar that I put all of the uh, change into. We usually save that for our adventures. But um, yes, I am on TV. Hi, hey sport. <laughs> Such a cute little kid. And again, I, I want you to. Those guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of opsec. Um, but uh, how do you how do you start? What I would recommend is I would start preparing for a weekend. You're going to start preparing for a weekend, and then you're going to stretch that weekend out to a month. Then you're going to stretch that weekend out to a year. But um, keep it low tech and simple. The more Wi-Fi I still use, easier it is. Okay, let's talk about Wi-Fi security for a minute. If you have Wi-Fi, I want you to look up online on generating random pass keys, and I want you to keep your pass key as short and random as possible you know if you have a 10 a 10 character pass key that's all random characters and numbers it's probably going to be pretty secure but if your password is password you need to work on that or, yeah, keep, work on keeping your router, keep on working your router secure you know i i have um about the fastest internet that's available in this area i've got fiber i've got all, uh, most of my devices on it but i take password security really seri really seriously change your password uh quarterly um or at least twice a year here's an here's a uh, here's a good one schedule schedule your stuff i hate to take what i call the checklist approach to preparedness if you look at like uh, ready.gov or any of those uh, websites things from the government or from your local community American Red Cross, I, they often have good ideas, but it's always a checklist. Get one of the, do you have your earthquake bag? Do you have your flashlight in your earthquake bag? Don't take a checklist approach. I want you to take a personal approach. But when you check twice a year, twice a year, I want you to check the batteries in your smoke detectors. Mm -hmm. And while you're checking the batteries in your smoke detectors, you're going to go through your go bags and your short-term food storage and make sure nothing is exert, uh, you know, way past expiration or torn or ripped or no good, and then change the passwords on your router. Do it all at once. Take yep. a weekend. Do it someplace where you're – like uh, over Easter weekend, right? Easter weekend, everyone's home. While everyone's home, are, 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 the, are the shoes in the kids' go bags too small now? Do we need to swap out the shoes? Um, are, did somebody lose a sock out of their go bag? Uh, did something get lost, misplaced or broken? While you're doing all that, change your Wi-Fi password. Yep. And a quick yeah, tip, you know, for you, your, uh, Kat, uh, Kat, Kevin, you're absolutely right. No, um, what, there are dictionaries online. Uh, five words is really awesome. And when you generate your five words, I like the dice method. You can look that up. And when you use the dice method, use physical dice, not a random number generator. 
because random gem generators are not. So, and, and the other advantage of the word, the dictionary, is that it's easy to remember. If I have five random words that are not strung together normally, so you can't use a, what they call a dictionary brute force method of breaking your encryption. If it's yep. words like, I don't know, um, uh, Lazarus, Gray, um, Paint, um, Jargon. Then you've got five words that are short and easy to remember, and you can put them in a sentence that's much easier to remember than ampersand, I, Q, dollar sign, um, dog with an, a zero, and one of the Gs is capitalized. Much harder Another to remember thing, with the dictionary method. And, and if you're going to be using words, um, also use the word use words that, that that are toward the end of the alphabet because any of those encryption devices are going to go alphabetically starting with a through the entire dictionary well if yours is you know xyz words um it's going to take a little bit longer not much because those things are fast use the um there there is a if you look up look it up online there is a a whole, a whole bank of words that you can use they're all random and they're they're chosen with dice and it and with you know, until quantum computing becomes a thing mm -hmm. uh, it is it'll it would take millions of years to break one of those codes um so yeah uh, uh, kevin you're you're absolutely right and i, I didn't really want to get into that especially uh, since um your router might not allow too many i don't know how many characters your router will allow Mm -hmm. but there are lots of ways to generate random passphrases and the more random they are, the more secure they are. So definitely take your computer security seriously. Same thing we talked about in the house. There's no reason that any uh, online uh, buyer or seller needs to have your home address. Yeah. Need your home address. Oh, but we don't deliver, but we, but we only deliver by FedEx. Well, if you don't deliver my post office box, then I'm not going to do business with you. Yep. Right. Also, another thing you can do while you do that, you can do this. You can you can go to the post office and give them your home address and say, I do not want any mail delivered here at all. And they will do that. Yep. You can have no, I, I don't get any mail at home at all. The mailman never comes to my house. Yep. I don't get junk mail delivered to my house. I don't get any mail. All mail is all mail is returned if it's got my home address on it. And whatever you do, don't go pick up your mail at a post office box after hours. Go go when they're open. Because it's, you'd it's, be amazed how many you'd be amazed how many people get mugged walking out of a post office box. You know, that's after that's hours. we're gonna get that's I said that's a the the, the transitional spaces managing mm -hmm. transitional spaces is a whole show into itself yeah and I I would definitely there are a few things that you can do without getting off into the weeds don't look at your phone while you're in transitional spaces uh, don't sit in your car and look read your text messages while you're in transitional spaces um, if you have uh, a, a can of pepper spray, keep it in your hand while you're in transitional spaces. Um, yep, uh, that's that's all. Uh, there, that's where people the surface of a whole other episode. That's a whole, like, at least a whole other episode. Look at right. look up. Um, I said if you looked it up on YouTube. There are a lot of guys that have some really good videos on it. There's a guy named Chuck Haggard. He's an expert, uh, subject matter expert on managing transitional spaces. Um, Paul Sharp. As an expert in managing uh, transitional spaces, again, um, Craig Douglas, uh, who is a – these are all men that I know personally that are, are experts in this field. Um, if, you can, if you can take a class from any of these people, they do offer one- and two-day classes. I've got a class signed up with Paul Sharp um, at, the end of, end of, at the end of the month – or next month in June, pardon me um, – these are things that you can do to uh, improve your situation by improving your own mindset and your own learning. Never stop learning. Never stop growing. But 
a little bit outside the scope of purely home security. You mentioned uh, having a, if you have a garage, if you have a garage, don't let your garage get filled with crap. Use your garage <laughs> to park your car. It's not a storeroom. And if you have a garage, make sure that the garage door is secured and um, ma uh, make sure that if you have, again, those, those electronic garage doors, those clickers, there's only like 30 frequencies for those. Yep. I don't, I don't really yep. trust, I don't really trust those um, uh, wireless uh, garage door openers because I think they're too easy to spoof. But yeah, that, um, that's why I said they're, they're, you know, tied between first place uh, between the easiest way to get into someone's house is to the garage you, door the or garage, the back door. Opening, having the garage door open and then, you know, closing the garage door and locking the garage door behind you is a good, it's good cheap home security. But using your garage as a place to store boxes and boxes and boxes of Christmas decorations. Hey, hey, stop, stop, stop giving away my, 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 clothes, uh, clothes that are too small for your kids anymore and stuff like that. No, I, I think yeah. that, I think that enclosed garages are amazing if they're yeah. used appropriately. Um, and, and a quick tip. Because um, I found this out the hard way. If you've got one of those locks on the inside of your garage, you know, um, so that it won't open unless you unlock it, put yourself a note by the interior door where you have your uh, button to open the garage door. Because if you forget and you push that and you push that button, it will tear itself apart. And you will have a nightmare situation with needing to replace the garage door opener and quite possibly the door. Sometimes they'll just say, nope, not going to, uh, something's stopping it and it, and it'll stop on its own. But I had that happen when we first moved in here. And uh, somehow uh, the clicker was in a drawer. One of the extra clickers was in a drawer. Okay. I know, right? And it, it tore the garage door apart. And it took a couple of days before someone could get out and fix it. And you can guess where I slept those nights, <laughs> literally in the garage. Um, right. I think it, may, it might have only been 24 hours, uh, but it was it was miserable. I had to spend the entire time out there. On the good side, though, it helped me unpack quicker. But I was alone by myself, and the rest of the family was still emptying out the old house and decided, hey, we're not going to be there till morning. And even then, when we get there, the, door, the garage door is a disaster. So put yourself a nice big note that you have to move to push the button. I mean, get a big sheet of paper, say, don't forget the lock. So you can go over, unlock the lock, and then push the button. Because otherwise, you will seriously regret it. Yeah. And, and then another yeah. point, is the, 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 door, if there, the door between the garage and the house um, the, make sure that the door between the garage and the house is locked and make sure that's a good sturdy door too because if I can get into your garage then I can get into your house if that door is not if that door leads into a mudroom or a kitchen or something like that make sure that door is make sure that door is as secure as any other door in your house right and uh, believe it or not a lot of places have um, like uh you have the door that leads uh, from, you open up your garage, you open up the door to get into the house. But if you can put yet another door in there, in between that, even, you know, kind of like four feet away, put that secondary door in there. Um, trust me, uh, that's, that, that will keep people out of your home. Uh, you know, obviously it's, it's a bit of an expense, but if you can afford it, it it's, it's so worth it. Uh, some houses are already like that for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I've seen a few that have that. You know, you walk into the garage from from the car into the house, then you got to open a second door. You know, uh, if you may be able to get to the laundry room kind of thing. I think that's yeah. what it's for. Is sure. you close the door so so you're not listening to the uh, the the washing machine or the dryer or right. it's uh, venting the heat or what have you from the dryer. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think that's what it what it is. But it keeps all that. Uh, what is a mud room? I've never heard that before. A mud room is, I don't know, sometimes people have like a little, uh, like a vestibule like you're talking about off the door where you can leave 
uh, muddy shoes and your winter coat. Oh, okay, and, okay. Uh, yeah, you know what? I had one. I had one of those in Virginia. I just didn't yeah. know what it was called. Right. So if you've got something like that, usually it's attached. Usually it's like close to a kitchen or close to the outside, especially off the side of the house, where place where kids can leave their muddy coats when they get home from school. I don't think they're really common out in avocado land. Okay, that's crazy, dude. That's just crazy. Um, I've made similar mistakes, but not actually been able to get into the car, but tried to get into the car. Um, and I'm like... Yeah, they only have so many frequencies. Right. You're, you're better off uh, not not even owning one of those uh, electronic, it's you know, good, good, good things thing because... Anymore. I think well, just don't carry it with you. Yeah. Uh, just well, get a regular key or, or let the battery go dead. Yeah, but somebody, just else, use the key. somebody else's key fob that's getting into your car. Right. So unless you, like, disabled it, have you know, a locksmith disable it or a mechanic. Right, right, right. It. right, because if something bad happens to you, one of the first things they're going to take is your keys. You know, right. if you get mugged, they always take your keys. They always take your wallet. Um, which is something we can talk about in that other episode, the transitional spaces. Right. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, basically, guys, start out small. You know, and, and unless yeah, you've got the budget, good. start out small. Um, you know, all it takes is 10 bucks a week uh, to, to really get it, the ball rolling. You know, um, if, if you're worried about not having a year to save up, then obviously put a little bit more into it. But with 10 bucks a, a week, whether you put right. it into a fund or whether you start, you know, buying, you know, non-perishable foods sure. or whatever, and, and and then take those coins that you know that you have from that specific ten dollar bill or twenty dollar bill or even the the, the ones and, and change, put that in a separate container, and that's just for that. You won't miss it. And right. if you can't loosen your budget by ten bucks a week, um, you know, then make it five. Well, I, you know? I want to talk about that for a minute. Um, this is a rabbit hole that you don't want to necessarily fall down. The One of the reasons I got back into hobbying is because for a while I was so into preps and prepping and that prepper mindset that it was bad for my psyche. Yeah. And my, my wife, you've, you've seen her, my, my lovely wife, Mrs. Paints Minis, she said, why don't you get a hobby? And so I actually I started out, um, I was playing just playing Lego with the kids, Lego. And uh, I, I got, got I was lucky enough to get back in role playing gaming and minis. And uh, I, I tell you what I'll do. Like I said I've got years and years of this. I'm not a, necessarily a subject matter expert. I don't have any professional bona fides. But I'll make a deal for my subscribers. If you are, if you leave me, if you have a question about any of this stuff, and you leave a comment on one of my videos and a way to get back to you, I'll see if I can address your concerns. Yep. Because I want to make sure that everybody is safe and at ease in their home situation and their skin. So, smart woman. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole other animal, too. She's the one that got me back into school and back into, you know, on a, on a professional career path because she, I, I married above my station. 20 years. 20 years I've been married. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, Couples fit together and, and complement each other's shortcomings, and I think that's kind of what it's really about in the long run. Because you know, after 20, 30, 40 years, you're not thinking the same way, but you're still thinking the same way. You know what I mean? Right. Or, or what have you? But yeah, just you know, start small, guys, um, and you know, don't don't let it, you know. Don't let it, you know, do what it did to Bo and, and take up all your your, your free time because that's the time you're you're not at a gaming table. You know, uh, once you've done your like like real real simply, say you've got that ten bucks every week. Once you've spent the money and you've stocked, you know, put the stuff away. Forget about it till the next week. Just make sure you put another ten bucks in that in that can or whatever, you know, or, or on your shopping list or whatever. Take it, put it away. You know, obviously, you got to keep doing certain things, you know, locking the doors when you leave, et cetera. You know, your usual routine, same thing with going to bed. But don't let it, you know, become a hobby. It's not meant to be a hobby. It's meant to be, um, you know, you really shouldn't have to spend any time on it at all. 
but because we do, you know, in, in a perfect in a perfect world, we wouldn't have to worry about it. But we don't live in Canada, so exactly. But I, I, I mean, I've showed you some of my uh, my my prep notebooks. I yeah. would recommend getting a small notebook, uh, just because I want you to have. If you're if you're on that ten bucks a month, I want you to have a small budget, and I do want you to write down write down your concerns for your neighborhood, for your situation. Um, I do want to eventually go over on this show, uh, building a threat matrix and the threat matrix is simply a two. It's a two axis grid. Your two axis grid is you're on one axis. You're going to write down um, the likelihood of a disaster. And then another axis, you're going to write down the severity of a disaster. And then in that matrix, you're going to write down every disaster you can think of something that's, completely debilitating and completely unlikely asteroid strike, right? Something that's completely non-debilitating and 100% likely stubbing your toe on, uh, on the door jam, right? And in between, you're going to fill that matrix out and that's where you're going to, that's where you're going to spend your money and your time. You know, Hey, may, what if I lose my job for six months? Okay. We're going to prepare for that. What if I have a flat tire? Okay, we're going to prepare for that. And that way you can focus your limited time and your limited resources on things that are the most effective. You know, uh, if, if, you live in, if you live in tornado, if you live in tornado country, I want you to prep for a tornado. If you live in the middle of the desert, you don't need to prep for a tornado. So, again, what's the most likely – now, in – in 2000, in 2020, where I live, in a six-month period, I'm in I'm in the Ma Rocky Mountains, mind you. We had a hurricane. Not 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 shitting you. We had a hurricane, a bunch of earthquakes, and COVID-19, all at once. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, none of us. Who had who had hurricane force winds on your prep card? None of us did. Did it happen? Yeah, a lot of folks lost lost, lost uh, you know shingles off their roof and garden fences and stuff like that. I had a guy try to break in while I was at home. RPG grandma, that's a whole different kettle of fish. I would not mind talking about that with anyone, but a lot of the same principles apply. Good locks, good windows, nine one one. And then after that, where you stand depends on where you sit. I don't necessarily recommend firearms to people that are not interested in being responsible for their use and getting the necessary training. But if you are interested in doing that, and I'd be happy to talk to anybody about it. That's actually uh, part two of this next week. We will talk about what happens when the worst happens. You know, if somebody comes in. Get a, get a, well, and what's, and what's legal where you are. I'm not advocating yeah. breaking the law. There are a lot nope. of places where I will say this: there are a lot of places where black powdered firearms are not even legally considered firearms. Yep. Just food for thought: if firearms are not legal, but there are regulations against black powder, a, a black a cap and ball revolver, or mm -hmm. a or a black powdered shotgun, you have two shots. I don't know, but I again, I'm not I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not recommending. I'm not necessarily recommending any of those things. I would say, and that, that's another thing. If you have the money, you know, a couple thousand dollars to an attorney as a retainer's fee. Yep. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Because if you can afford it. Once you've, once not, you've got that, not, once you uh, get a retainer, okay. that's forever. At least as long as that attorney's, as long as that practice is still, you got practices in this country that have been around for, you know, a hundred years. Find a find a you know a lawyer that work. It's at one of those practices. So if that lawyer leaves, well, you've still got his practice on retainer. Yep, yep. I'll tell you an interesting story about that one of these days, because um, you never know when they're just gonna up and disappear or quit or. Well, yeah, you don't want freaking Saul from Breaking Bad as your attorney for crying out loud. <laughs> I kind of did. I kind of did, and. And uh, it was it, well. It was an interesting story for a completely different uh, venue, but I, I think that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, we'd like to keep it at an hour. We went, you know, an extra fifteen for you guys because we love you so much. Because I'm and we stuck. To, oh, 
we, we, we want you, we want you to all be safe and, 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 and come back and, and, you know, game with us, whether it be online or, or at one of the cons, one of these days, um, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here and, you know, share this video out if you get a chance, you know, or, or the whole series, you know, to people who are, you know, your fellow gamers who, who aren't really paying attention, you know, they're just thinking it's all going to be okay. Well, yeah, hopefully it will, but if it's not, you know, forewarned is forearmed and, you know, a pound of, uh, or excuse me, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah. So stay safe out there, everybody. And uh, have a like, great week. Comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and come find me at Bo Paints Minis. Absolutely. We got to get this guy up, you know, uh, uh, up to at least 500 by the end of the year. That's the goal. He, he, should, be, he should be zooming past, you know, some of the other, other folks out there that, that uh, don't put as much uh, heart into his videos. And, oh, hey. <laughs> we were just talking about you, Brian. Uh, I wish you were here earlier, but uh, we all, the three of us, need to hook up again real soon. Yeah, I got I got I want to talk to you, Brian, about uh, about about model scale and gamings uh, eventually. I think that maybe uh, maybe we could do a live stream or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get as many as many nerds on at once to do a a a a, a, a build and paint and crap video uh real soon here uh may maybe you know what, Bo? You, you just hit 50 maybe that's how you can celebrate and invite I some of the, the old part i don't know if we're gonna name we're gonna name a soon i don't know if it'll be before the table breaker show or the whatever the gatekeeper show or uh or, or later in the week maybe saturday but i do want to do no not saturday saturday shadow chat but we're gonna have a live stream if you have any questions if you want to ask me anything uh let's keep it pg rated um, if you have any, uh, ask me anything, put it on, uh, put it on my uh, channel. I've got a video, a short up about the AMA. What's AMA again? Ask me anything. Oh, okay. I was thinking something totally different, but no, okay. Yeah. No, not the American I, 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 Medical I, Association or the American Medical Association. No, it's an AMA is asking things. So if you have any questions about, uh, gaming or gaming related stuff or model building stuff, or you just want to chat, I want to have a live stream. Later in the week. Take care, everybody. We'll see you guys real soon. Happy trails.